This dumper lifts and spills stock box contents into a floor bin. Unloading stock boxes from floor level avoids use of forklift trucks. Although relatively inexpensive, it requires complex guarding. Dumped connecting rod forgings are elevated by a conveyor to an orienting conveyor system. Parts are spread and diverted off one conveyor onto an opposing orienting conveyor. Parts are isolated to a single flow path without end or face selection. Sensors above the orienting path detect the attitude of each part and signal pneumatic ejectors. Pin ends leading parts are allowed to pass while others are ejected to the recirculation conveyor. The method is gentle, quiet, and efficient. End selected parts are conveyed, clamped, and probed to sense specific face features. They are then released through a pair of shuttle tracks through appropriate twists to a final face selected discharge chute. A fork truck is used to load stock boxes into this rotary dumper cradle. It avoids lift and spill safety issues and fully turns boxes to exit all parts. Stock boxes are nearly inverted before a static fender allows parts to flow. The concept allows a gentle parts drop onto a meter conveyor. The conveyor is indexed to meter these 20-pound cast iron bearing cap clusters over a grate to sort out small pieces of tramp material. Tramp sorted parts flow to another conveyor to create separation. For further separation, parts are metered to a recirculation conveyor. Sensors control dump and meter action. Parts are coaxed onto an opposing orienting conveyor where they are isolated end to end. Orienter tooling rejects parts with downward concave surfaces. Many pass properly because rejected parts are coaxed into proper attitude to the recirculation conveyor. Pre-oriented parts are conveyed to an end selecting mechanism. A mechanical probe checks a lump of cast iron for end selection. Each part is raised and rotated 90 degrees either way to achieve end selection. They are pushed into a rotary turnover device for final presentation. Small pins with a chamfer at one end are stored and elevated to a sorting orienter. Two orienter paths are provided to make rate in one straight line vibratory unit. Parts are pre-oriented end to end without end selection to mechanical end selectors. A tooling gap in each pre-orienter allows short parts sorting to scrap. Because borderline short parts may jam in the gap, a sensor operated pneumatic blade will clear them. Inspected parts speed through two tracks to a pair of end selectors which alternately cycle to a common track at 70 pieces per minute. A similar system with three end selectors handle Torx head studs via three tubes into an index collection dial with multiple nests. A batch of 36 parts is released through tubes for delivery distribution. Mechanical distribution directs selective batches of parts to both sides of two stations of an engine head assembly line. There are four possible batches of parts per cycle with variable quantities per batch to suit three engine head designs. This floor bin has an elevating conveyor with special lift cleats for valve guides. A belt on the face of the chain controls parts fallback. Cleats are specially spoiled to get single part pickup. As parts leave the cleats, they slide through a plastic tube to vibratory tooling which sorts out mixed length parts and distributes to two paths. Extra paths can be furnished. Orienter tooling is perforated to move oily parts. Piston pins arrive pre-stacked in plastic tote boxes. They must be gently dumped, oriented, and fed for assembly. Totes are manually placed on a storage conveyor for release to a ram pad. A cover slides over the cradle where the tote will stop. The ram lowers the tote into the cradle without spilling parts. The cradle cover holds parts in the tote as it is overturned. Lift cradle action moves the tote through an arc until it is upside down over a conveyor. The cradle lid is then withdrawn, letting parts flow gently onto the meter conveyor. To avoid parts damage, only non-metallic tooling touches the parts. The metering conveyor indexes to satisfy a sensor in the orienting system. A non-metallic belt conveyor receives metered parts and coaxes them onto a parallel conveyor moving in the opposite direction. Parts are coaxed to flow end-to-end, -end, either end leading, 
via a single path. Misoriented or surplus parts move into the recirculating conveyor. When the tote is empty, it is returned through cradle motion to a discharge conveyor. This vibratory metering pan receives brass zipper parts from an overhead bin at six cubic feet per hour. Parts move up a shallow incline in the fluid-filled pan. Fluid covers parts, but not enough to reach the discharge end. A pump and sump tank holds, flows, drains, and filters fluid through the pan. A tandem vibratory pan holds another liquid to further treat parts, leaving the first pan. Subsequent pans are used to treat, rinse, and dry the tiny parts. These cast sink preforms are used to make small battery cans. Too thin and too thick preforms spoil the can making process. This feeder is tooled to sort product thickness. Parts are rolled through a dual pair of rotating gauge discs for sorting at 1,000 pieces per minute. This piston pin feeder has worked for a top of the line engine manufacturer for over 15 years. Parts are dumped into the floor bin, elevated, oriented end to end, and tracked for final assembly without quality compromise. Differential drive gear forgings are put into a rotary gondola dumper and discharged into a large floor bin. An elevating conveyor with slanted cleats lifts parts to a pre-orienter. Size and weight of the parts family does not allow reliable recirculation of misoriented pieces. Every elevated part is accepted without face selection through a track to a mechanism that senses and corrects for face orientation in a turnover unit. Friction type bearings are elevated from a floor bin by slanted cleats to an orienter. They roll diameter to diameter through a track to a reciprocating unit that pushes them into face-to-face -face delivery for sizing or grinding. A variety of bolt blanks are fed to a thread roller. Here, testing is done with pre-threaded bolts. Gondolas of parts are loaded into a stand which spills parts into a floor bin. They are elevated into a straight-line tooled vibratory unit hung by their heads and flowed through an adjustable track. A wide range of sizes can easily be handled at very high rates. Miscellaneous bolts are fed for thread coating. Various sizes and shapes are elevated into a straight line tooled vibratory unit. A twist rail orienter concept is used to be sure that short parts feed properly. A live feed track is used for direct flow to a coating process unit. These water pump castings are dumped into a floor bin elevator and vibratorily coaxed into a proper face attitude with radial orientation. A live feed track and escapement releases them to a presentation nest for robotic pickup. Tape drive housings are fed in a similar fashion for auto and truck window regulators. There are two pathways, but only one is visible here. Parts are coaxed to stand on edge, radially align, and move in a vibratory system to be released one at a time and presented to a pick-and-place unit. Hinge straps for automotive doors are dumped into a floor bin elevator, carried up, and pre-oriented by straight-line vibratory tooling. Parts are oriented with their ears leading and or trailing. A track-mounted mechanism stops and turns them for final selection. Mechanical intervention was needed to make the desired rate. These universal joint inner ball races are elevated and pre-oriented in a vibratory path. A sensor looks for the chamfer on one face of the center hole. Parts with face chamfer down are ejected to the bin for another truck. Proper face-selected parts flow down a radial control track. These oil pan drain plug blanks are elevated to a vibratory straight line orienter. They are hung by their heads and tracked to a thread roller. 
A broad variety of sizes and shapes are fed at 120 pieces per minute. Bolt-in, quick-change tooling is used to handle the group of sizes. Elbow forgings are oriented via dual paths and live track by straight-line vibratory tooling. A pick-and-place unit removes one part at a time from each path for loading into fixture nets. These formed sheet metal conduit connector bodies are dripping with oil. They are vibratorily oriented radially and end selected at 100 pieces per minute for assembly of clamp screws. Bowl feeders fail to perform in the oil environment. These sheared steel billets must be warmed and dye lube treated prior to forging. They are oriented, escaped, weighed, length checked, and eddy current tested for proper alloy. Acceptable parts are elevated to an overhead billet heater. Raw forged connecting rods are elevated out of a floor bin into a vibratory tooled orienter unit, coaxed into a single pathway and hung by their crankheads. A vibratory live feed path moves parts into a probe and face check station. An oil hole boss is the checkpoint. Shuttle twist tracks are used to exit all parts, properly face selected, from the final track. A broad variety of sheet metal needle bearing races are stacked, three deep, on a furnace belt. More than a dozen people did it by hand. This feeder orients, distributes, and slides them onto the furnace belt in three layers at up to 500 pieces per minute. Plastic soda bottle base cups are elevated, isolated into a single path, face selected, and finally presented to an assembly machine. Cups for three different bottle sizes are fed in this conveyor concept at 200 to 400 pieces per minute. Inner tubes are still used for truck tires. They use a valve with a brass stem and thin rubber flange. A broad variety of sizes are stored, elevated, vibratorily oriented, hanging by overlapped flanges, and fed to assembly. These keys hold engine valves and springs in assembly. They are flow metered and spread to six pathways, oriented, and flex tracked for automatic assembly. Parts are coaxed to ride a rod for isolation and then over end selecting windows. Misoriented parts are returned to the pre-oriented. These spark plug shells are fed for side wire welding. They are flow metered to a vibratory orienting system and coaxed into a single pathway. They are stood on end, isolated, and end selected. Misoriented or surplus production parts are recirculated until used. Once trapped, they flow through a vibratory twist track for final presentation with side wire joint face upward. Many different spark plug body designs are fed in a single feeder with bolt-in tooling plates. Parts-part -part changeover is done in less than 10 minutes. Solder rings, a variety of sizes, are slipped onto cardboard tubes for shipping. Bolt-in feeder tooling is quickly exchanged to handle any of the variety of part sizes. Rings are metered from storage, transferred to an orienter system, and coaxed to roll isolated in a single path. Extra tooling features eject bent, warped, or incomplete parts. Oriented and inspected parts drop onto a pin inserted into a cardboard tube. Filled tubes are tipped and capped for shipment. One person handles the whole operation, where dozens of people used to bear the tedium of hand loading. Payback was complete in one month. One nut and two different ferrules are reassembled before assembly to a fitting. Separate feed systems are used to merge three paths of oriented parts to an assembly unit. Vibratory straight line tooling is used to isolate, orient, and assure foolproof presentation through live feed paths. All three paths terminate, one above the other, in proper order. One of each part is speared and stripped from track ends into assembly at 90 strokes per minute. 
Sensors detect presence of a part in each of the three track jaws before strip out is allowed. Incomplete or errant assemblies never occur. A spring retainer, keys, and cup are held together with a plastic rivet to assist in engine head assembly. The sub-assemblies must be oriented, distributed to two pathways, and inspected for missing parts. Incomplete assemblies are diverted to scrap. Further mechanical action creates a four-path arrangement for pick-and-place to engine assembly. A variety of heavy steel tubes are stored, metered, and tracked to a process operation. A special insertable gondola was developed to hold, tip, and meter the parts through a special reciprocating feed ram. Tube diameters of 6 to 7 inches by 4 feet long are metered rolling, diameter to diameter, from the portable gondola. A portable gondola is filled with small motor shafts and manually placed into a rod feeder. Parks are coaxed to roll from the gondola through a stub magazine. A mechanism escapes them, one at a time, for processing. Parts can be manually placed into the gondola in a topping-off effort at any time. Much larger insertable gondola systems are adaptable to handle larger shaft-like parts. Units can be furnished with adjustment features for a range of diameters and or lengths. Bathtub caulk nozzles are auto-loaded into blister packs with a simple motion developed to solve a nagging problem. These cast aluminum pistons have fragile skirts which cause the user to choose hand feeding. We demonstrated that a fendered rotary gondola dumper will allow a controlled non-damaging drop to an orienting system. Parts are metered from the dumper to a vibratory orienter they are coaxed to stand on end with skirts upward and cross holes aligned for delivery to a mechanical escapement. Parts are inspected for diameter, skirt length, skirt presence, and probe for cross hole clearance. These 8 inch diameter steel stampings are normally difficult to feed. Here, they are metered into a recirculating orienter conveyor system. Parts are wanted with hubs up. Up down parts are rejected and coaxed to flip over so they are correct for the next time around. They are fed at 70 pieces per minute. These oil filter end caps are stored, elevated, and oriented for assembly. Elevation is done with a magnetic back conveyor belt to avoid part damage. Parts are face selected and fed diameter to diameter at rates up to 160 pieces per minute. Replaceable and adjustable tooling allows handling a variety of parts in a single feeder. These oil filter screw plates are fed for tapping and assembly. They are elevated with a specially cleated chain, oriented with face selection, tracked and distributed, in this case, to dual paths to satisfy two tapper spindles. Up to eight spindle paths at 100 pieces per minute have been handled by a single feeder system. A small floor bin elevator is equipped with special lift cleats to get engine valve seats to a pre-orienter. Parts roll without face selection onto a vibratory straight line tooling system with features to sort out mixed part diameters before they move to face selection. Parts with sharp edges toward the tooling will pass while chamfered edge faces drop to recirculation. Non-face selected or improper geometry parts are not permitted to pass by virtue of a final silhouette gate. Distribution to multiple paths is done by filling the first path, then the second, and the third, etc. The system is simple, foolproof, and without mechanisms. Flex tracks carry parts to the assembly station. Screws, bolts, and similar parts are easily delivered to multiple points via single feeder systems. A floor bin permits convenient storage of bulk parts. An elevating conveyor moves them to a vibratory unit to be coaxed by special tooling into oriented paths. They are tracked, 
escaped and accumulated in an index magazine for batch release to multiple pads. A tall elevator with high mounted orient, escape and distribution features can gravity flow parts to final use through convenient flex tracks. A short elevator with low profile, orient, escape, and distribution features can be fitted with pneumatic propulsion units to drive escape parts through flex tracks to remote destinations. Receivers can be mounted at the ends of flex tracks to present and hold parts for ram or driver action at final assembly.